Hey, it's Min from The Art of Verbal War, where people learn to excel in verbal skills. At the suggestion of one of my subscribers, today's video is about the famous football coach Jose Mourinho, who happens to also be a verbal god, someone whose every utterance is scrutinized, dissected, eagerly waited for, and frankly, enjoyed by people all around the world. Now in America, it's not common for coaches to get covered in the news, but when I used to go to London for work every once in a while during the time he coached for Chelsea, I would see people on a train reading newspaper articles about him literally every single day. In America, that's just not that common. We might hear about players in the press, but coaches, not so much. And even if we did, it certainly would never be a daily thing. Fast forward to today, I just read some article about Mourinho that said he's got quote unquote, a unique brand of sideshow entertainment. And I also watched a video where he referred to himself as a special one. I don't know enough about his coaching skills, but indeed he is a special one when it comes to the realm of figurative or metaphorical speaking. He's a modern day master of metaphor. So in this video, I'm going to show you a few examples of past metaphors used by Jose Mourinho in his most memorable quotes. And we'll see if we can extract some lessons to help you become a master of metaphor yourself. So here goes. Let's take a look at a few of his famous metaphors. When asked about rotating Joe Cole, Arjun Robin, and Damian Duff, why drive Aston Martin all the time when I have Ferrari and Porsche as well? That would just be stupid. When asked about pressure, I am prepared. The more pressure there is, the stronger I am. In Portugal, we say the bigger the ship, the stronger the storm. Fortunately for me, I have always been in big ships. FC Porto was a very big ship in Portugal, Chelsea was also a big ship in England, and Inter was a great ship in Italy. Now I'm at Real Madrid, which is considered the biggest ship on the planet. In describing a three-team race, one of which is his team, Two horses and a little horse. A little horse that still needs milk and, uh, and work and learn how to jump, and a horse that next season, next season. When asked about his young players, they are eggs that need a mom, or in this case a dad, to take care of them, to keep them warm during the winter, to bring the blanket and work and improve them. One day the moment will arrive when the weather changes, the sun rises, you break the eggs, and the eggs are ready to go for life at the top level. Again, when asked about young players, Young players are a little bit like melons. Only when you open and taste the melon are you 100% sure that the melon is good. Sometimes you have beautiful melons, but they don't taste very good. And some other melons are a bit ugly, and when you open them, the taste is fantastic. One thing is youth football, one thing is professional football. The bridge is a difficult one across, and they have to play with us and train with us for us to taste the melon. For example, Scott Sinclair, the way he played against Arsenal and Man United, we know the melon we have. When asked about the tightening of personnel budget at Chelsea, you know, omelets, hex. No eggs, no omelets. And depends of the quality of the eggs. In the supermarket you have eggs class 1, class 2, class 3. And some are more expensive than others, and some give you better omelets. So when, when the class 1 eggs, you know, are in waitress and you cannot go there, you have a problem. So those were some of Mourinho's best metaphors. Now what lessons about creating fantastic metaphors can we glean from these examples? Here are three tips I have. Number one, become an observer of life, people, and things. This is very basic and obvious, but very essential. From the metaphors you just saw, Mourinho is clearly a keen observer of life, people, and things, and it shows in the metaphors he uses. If you want to be a master of metaphor, you can't escape becoming a keen observer of life, people, and things. Two, figure out the optimal subject matter for your metaphors. In Mourinho's world, you'll see that there are three types of metaphors that are really appropriate, not just appropriate, but fantastic, that he goes to time and time again, which are food, animal kingdom, and transportation metaphors. He talks about Ferraris and boats, omelets and melons, and horses and eggs. These three types of subject matters are very appropriate in his field because he's constantly having to talk about players who are developing and players who are good. So you need to figure out in your world or topic what the most optimal subject matters are since there are usually certain types of subject matter that work best with any given topic. Now number three, this final tip is to never stop at the simple simile or simple metaphor. What I mean by simple simile or simple metaphor is 
X is like Y, or young players are like melons. If you stop there, that's not good enough. It's not impactful to leave your audience guessing as to what you mean. So instead of expressing your metaphor in too simplistic of a way, you need to expand upon it so that they understand what you mean. So, young players are like melons. Only when you open a melon can you be sure that they are good. You need to explain in vivid detail your metaphor. If you want to learn more about how to create better metaphors, actually amazing metaphors, so that you too can be a verbal god like Jose Mourinho, get a free preview of my course Master of Metaphor at www.artofverbalwar.com forward slash metaphor or click on the link in the description below or any of the cards in this video. You're going to love this course. This is Min Lu from The Art of Verbal War. Please give this video a like and let me know in the comments who else you'd like me to cover in the future. Until next time, keep being excellent, my friends.